You are listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 3rd of April, 2017. Lots of exciting stuff to share with you as we jump into our first chart, the S&P 500 on the weekly. What do we see going on? We have a confirmed weekly vertical crossover, albeit weak, and we don't have the derivative oscillator flipping over at the same time. We do have it confirmed, so we shall be looking for a jumping in point Monday morning after 10.30, after idiot hour. Why do we call it idiot hour? Because of all the power that the market makers are given by the market to adjust prices for the people who are foolish enough to place market orders. They're able to, well, they're able to control the market upon its opening much more than they are at other times. We don't ever get into the market until 10.30 or after. So look at how the market is shaping up at that time on the two-day chart. Still in a confirmed down move, of course, we do have, we had the two-day vertical crossover occur on the S&P 500 back on the 14th of March. Went down four nice down candles. Then for the last three days, that's the two-day candle ending the 30th, and then the first day of the two-day candle ending the 31st, the last day of the month of March, we had up candles. However, still enough power to continue powering down the PPO. Yes, the derivative oscillator lost some of its downward energy, but the PPO is our prime. The price percent oscillator is our prime indicator, and it's continuing to move down. Now, overall, what is the market trying to do? Well, the market appears to be trying to top out and go down. Now, there's reasons that people don't want that, of course, to happen. But what do we see as, and we'll talk about this as we go through the charts, when we jump into what are typically inversely correlated ETFs, which are gold and the 20-year bond, they are struggling to find bottoms and go up. We already saw the weekly vertical crossover uh, occur on both those charts a few weeks ago. So, that's the tension that we see. Do you understand that? That is the tension we see. The market's trying to top out in stocks and the inversely correlated ETFs. Why are they inversely correlated? Typically because the market's not doing well. People shift their money over into bonds and gold is safe havens. That makes sense. It ought to because that's the way the world works. Now, again, you can listen to all the market mavens, what everybody says on the news. Remember, they're selling you commercials, my friends. They're selling you ads. They're selling you products. These charts tell you what's actually going on with price movement. So you can listen to all these talking heads and be entertained, but realize a lot of it's infotainment. You're being given some information, some controlled media, and it's infotainment. So Watch what's really going on. That's why we try to read the stock charts. Weak crossover on the weekly, but a crossover nonetheless. When we see the derivative oscillator flip over, I'll feel lots better, but it hasn't happened yet. So again, be weary of the market topping out totally, but that's what we're seeing, and that weekly vertical crossover has been so good to us. So, And we're seeing it confirmed, of course, by what's going on in the inversely correlated gold and bonds. Let's look at the Qs. What is the Qs? That's the NASDAQ 100. Again, we've ended the week with a doji. What does that mean? It's actually the second doji. This is a real hardcore doji, though, as we ended this week. That is a cross. It means the market pretty much opened and closed at about the same point. It means indecision. What do we see going on with the PPO, the price percent oscillator? Sliding sideways. What does that mean? Indecision. It's not crossed over going down yet, but it's not going up either. It's sliding sideways. It may very well mean that the market has reached a top. Of course, the two-day chart crossed over going down back around uh, the 10th or so. Well, I guess around the 13th, something like that. Uh, in fact, why don't we look at the two-day chart and see what it tells us? Two-day chart tells us the 14th, uh, that two-day chart ending on the 14th. That's when the two-day chart crossed over going down. That was that vertical crossover. So we still have technically the Qs is still in an up move because we don't have a crossover going down on the weekly. So we have no play there at this time because of the, the schizophrenia we have between an up weekly chart and a down two-day chart. Until we have that resolved, we don't have a trade on the queues other than 
continuing to ride up the weekly, although it does appear to be getting weak, and it's been sliding sideways so much that on the two-day chart, we really don't have much of a chart to follow because our PPO price percent oscillator doesn't work well in a sideways sliding market. So again, don't put a lot of faith in that right now until we start seeing some price movement. Now let's keep moving through. Now we're getting to the inversely correlated funds. What do we see going on? Oh, and for the record, Q's was down 0.07% for the day on Friday. S&P 500 down 0.23%. What do we see going on on TLT? Well, that is a 20-year bond fund up 0.29%. Now remember, what have we been looking for? Because we have the weekly vertical crossover occurred back on the 3rd. And we also saw there about mid-March, we saw the two-day chart rotate over going up. So we had the potential for an entry point. It's been somewhat squirrely for us. So if we look at the two-hour chart, what do we see going on? We had that crossover point. We had the pullback we were waiting for. We had a huge morning on the 27th, and then it just sort of petered out, dropped over, and turned down. Still don't have a crossover, a good one yet, going up. Keep your eye on that. If you see at the beginning of the week the crossover going up, which may very well happen if the stock market continues to move down, and those of you who have a copy of the Stock Traders Almanac 2017, it's about the only publication we recommend by Jeff and Yale Hirsch. It's their 50th anniversary edition. If you don't have it, it's not too late to buy one. You got a lot more months left in 2017. They'll tell you that the first trading day in April Typically a good day. Not going to give you the stats because you know what? They get paid to give you the stats. And uh, But I will tell you that tends to be a day where the Dow is, is up 17 out of, well, it's up quite a bit. So again, keep an eye on things and just make sure that you're not jumping into TLT at the wrong time. And the same with the S&P 500 going down. So Watch these charts. All right, we're waiting for a crossover going up on TLT on that two-hour chart. Everything else is primed for you to get in. Let's go back to the weekly chart. Look at our last chart. It's gold. Oh, for the record, up 0.29% on TLT. Gold up 0.21%. We also have the weekly chart rotated over going up on gold back on the 27th. We do see some loss in power on the derivative oscillator, but... Our PPO continues to move up, and it actually slumped over toward the week ending the 10th of April. I'm sorry, 10th of March, but it started going up more since then. So, and we've had two weeks now of up candles as far as green up candles. And of course, as we zoom into our two day chart, we had a crossover on the two day chart going up on the 24th of March. So we've seen for the last two two-day candles, we've had a sideways slide. We have seen, of course, as we look at, let, let's zoom into our two-hour chart, have we had a jumping in point since that two-day chart crossed over going up? No, we haven't. The upward jump in gold on the 27th wasn't enough to pull that chart over. We're still in the backup. So again, Watch for a crossover going up on gold next week. Same for TLT. And again, lastly, look for a jumping in point on Monday morning potentially for the weekly vertical crossover. How are you really supposed to do that lastly? Well, we look at our two-hour chart. It is going down, okay? It's go oh, yeah, it's going down has been going down for many days. And we go and take a look at our two-hour chart. Now, it looks like it's getting ready to cross over going down. If it crossed over around 1030 going down, make it pretty easy as far as making a decision to jump into a virtual trade, wouldn't it? So, looks like it's priming for that. Consider looking for that on Monday. And we will continue to monitor this throughout all of the course of next week and see if the market really has topped. We do have some confirmation both in how gold and bonds are going up. And we have a weekly vertical crossover going up on those. And, 
of course, how the EQs is sliding sideways. A 10 tends to be sliding, looks like it's sliding sideways, maybe getting ready to go down. And of course, we've now got that weekly vertical crossover going down on the S&P 500. All of you who are on our text list, we sent out those text notifications of the weekly vertical crossover going down on SPY. If you don't already have that, well, here's how you do it. You need to put in your cell phone, 33222. That's the number you're sending a text to, and the text needs to read charting wealth. C-H-A-R-T-W-E-A-L-T-H-I-N... Oh my gosh, I'm trying to speak way too fast. I'm trying to keep this at 10 minutes for you guys. Text to the number 33222. The words charting wealth, that's our name. Make it one word. Send it to us. Those of you who subscribe already, and if you don't, please go to chartingwealth.com and subscribe. The instructions are there in the show notes. We send you every day along with links to our How to Read a Stock Chart video, the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com and how to get freestockcharts uh, freestockcharts.com, as well as our daily market worksheet and our weekly market worksheet. I'm ready for a rest. God bless you guys. Hope you appreciate what we do. We always love to hear from you. We try to answer your emails as quickly as we can, and we just appreciate you. We know you appreciate us. You guys have made us as high on the planet as number, what is it, eight now in stock trading videos at iTunes and as high as number six on stock market videos. So thank you, or podcasts, not even videos, podcasts. And thank you for the thousands that subscribe at the YouTube channel. Please go there and subscribe. Anything you can do to help us with our metrics, we so appreciate. God bless you. Let us hear from you. Sign up for the email. We send you the podcast every day like clockwork. Take care, my friends. We love to hear from you. God bless from chartingwealth.com.